Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a charm square quilt, but there's going to be a star in the middle of it. So Matt's been busy cutting and he has some really cute Christmas fabrics. And here they are. This is called Northern Lights and it's red and blue and gray. We're also going to need a background and most of these fabrics have white in them and white is going to make all of these look a lot better. So let's use that and take it down to the studio and get started. The five inch charm squares, they're exactly the size we need. So we don't have to do any sub cutting on those at all. So we're going to start with our background. I need to cut a lot of three inch squares here. And don't worry about how many because this will be a free pattern. So you can look at that and it'll tell you exactly what you need here. Once you have all of the three inch squares cut, we're going to take these right over to the ironing board and we are going to iron them in half on the diagonal. So we're just going to fold it in half, make sure those two points those two corners match and go ahead and iron it and use some steam. You want a nice hard line in there. So do that with all your squares. Now we're ready to start laying out the blocks. These are all the pieces we need. We need the squares and we need those folded white triangle pieces. So here's what the block is going to look like. We have nine pieces around the edge and I'm going to pick four different reds for the corners. So let's pull those out. And then I'm going to use blue in the other spot. So let's pick out four different blues. And then we're going to pick a light one for the center. So we can pick one from here. That would be a really nice center. And then these are going to be the points. So these white ones are going to be the points on every single block, but we will use a variety of different fabrics in each star block. So sometimes I'm going to use red in the corners like I did here, and sometimes I'm going to use blue in the corners, and I'm just going to make, make them look mixed, but I think it helps to plan it out ahead of time. Now, the light fabrics that are in here, some of them are grayer, so this will make a nice interesting center. But I also cut some plain white centers. So maybe I want, I'll do a few blocks that just have all white everywhere. The first step is to stitch one corner onto each one of these blue squares. So open up the fold, line up your corner, and then stitch right along that fold line or even ever so slightly to this side of it. And you can chain piece these. So you can take the next square, put the fabric in the corner and just keep stitching and we will snip apart the threads when we're done. Now we need to trim off the back two layers here. So what's gonna happen is this is going to get folded back on the fold that we already made but we want to trim off these two layers. So you can do this right here with your scissors. You just want to leave a quarter inch on all of these. Now we can open this back up and we can put the second corner. It's going to go over here. So now we're going to line up the raw edges on this corner. And we're going to again, again stitch right down that fold line. We are going to trim these just like we did with the first triangle there. So just cut it to leave a quarter inch and that's what that's going to look like. So I'm going to do that for all of these and then take them back to the ironing board. These are real easy to iron up because we've already ironed that fold in them, but it is nice to give it a nice good press. Those are all the pieces we need for the block. Now we just have to stitch the rows together. Here's how I like to do this. I like to flip these over 
and stitch all of these without trimming in between. So I'm going to take these top two, stitch right along here, and there's no matching, and they're exactly the same size, and just leave it on the machine. And then I'm grabbing the next pair, bringing it right over. Again, there's no matching at all. And then the last pair. So leave these all attached. I'm going to slide everything over a little bit. These are all going to get opened. And then these pieces will just get laid right on top. And I'm going to do them one at a time. So I'm going to sew this one here. Now my rows are together and they are in the correct order. So I'm going to finger press away from these blocks that have the points. So every time there's a point here, I'm going to go away from it. And that will make my seam allowances alternate in direction. So when I sew these rows together, those seam allowances will be going in opposite directions. The blocks are pretty easy to iron up. And let me show you something about these intersections here. I purposefully cut these point blocks big so that you don't have to worry about this block coming over and knocking off that point there. I like it nice and pointy. So you always have enough room. You don't have to worry about matching anything. And then your star is nice and crisp in every spot. So go ahead and make 14 more blocks. We're gonna need a total of 15 blocks. And you can mix it up. You can use different fabrics in the center. You can use solid white in the center. You can use blue in the corners and red here. You can make some all blue, some all red. Just make 15 interesting blocks. Now that the blocks are all done, we can lay these out. I have half of my blocks with blue corners and half of my blocks with red corners. So when I lay them out, I'm just going to alternate them. And I tried laying them out right next to themselves like this, but they really need some separation between the blocks. So I am going to put sashing between the blocks and I think this will look a lot better that way. The sashing pieces I cut here out of the white, they're two by 14 and I cut some cornerstones, two inches square. Now you don't have to remember the sizes because this is gonna be in the free pattern. So I'm gonna take, I just took my extra squares, my extra charm squares, and I cut these out of them. And I think I'm gonna do blue in the middle and red all the way around the outside here. I may trade up a little bit, but the reason I'm gonna do red around the outside is I think I'm gonna use a blue border. And so if I use red around the outside and blue in the middle ones, we'll have a nice contrast here. So I'm gonna get everything stitched up and get it onto the quilting machine. Here's the thread options for this quilt. And I know we have this blanker area in the stars there. So we could use a colored thread. We could use blue, we could use red, but I think the quilt will look better with the thread not showing in that part. So I think I'm gonna go with the, the lightest of all gray. Yeah, I think we'll go with this light silver. I've been waiting for the perfect quilt so I can use these snowflakes as a quilting pattern on it. And this one has some snowflakes, so that's what I'm going to use. The star quilt is all done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It doesn't look like it was made with charm squares, but that's all I used. I used five packages of charm squares and just a little bit of the background for the sashing and some of the centers of the stars. Now, if you do this in different colors, be sure to have a, a lot of contrast between your stars and your backgrounds so that they will really show. I love how the quilting turned out. Look, we've got a snowflake quilted right in the middle of that one. This is 51 by 81 inches. Quilting really floats into the back. We've got silver accents there. So you could easily make this bigger if you want. Just keep making stars. It also would make a really nice table runner size. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make a star quilt with charm squares. We hope you enjoyed it. Now we're gonna have another giveaway. We have this really sunny summer 
log cabin quilt. It's all in nice yellows and grays. And look at the back. This is made with a variegated print. So this is what your backs can look like if you use these variegated prints. I've got a seam going right down the middle. Now it's really easy to enter the giveaways. Just click that link below that says giveaway and put in your name and email address. Good luck. Now, if you don't want to miss any of our upcoming tutorials, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy quilting.